Good morning, Revolution. Welcome, Facebook comrades, YouTube comrades, all of the comrades and friends, both domestically and internationally. Um, we have uh, interesting, hopefully, can't promise, discussion this morning. Rosanna, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. There you go, Scott. Good morning, Revolution. You got your tongue. There you go. <laughs> you guys just got to be, I'm not going to do it no more. No more good morning, Revolution. <laughs> I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring my leftover fireworks from uh, Mexican Independence Day and, and, and <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> Against the law, no fireworks. <laughs> you if can't have it. Decide, it's okay. Don't lock your behind up in terrorism. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you be in jail with the defendant who attacked the Capitol on mm. January the 6th. Um, you don't want to be in jail with those guys. No, I do not. You don't want to be in, in jail generally. Well, congratulations, Rosanna. Big election in California. It was a blowout, a blowout. Exactly. It wasn't even close. Right. I mean, why do you think that uh, the Democrat got such a big vote? Well, I think um, that people were, were very conscious of what it, the recall was really about, which was the GOP trying to take over California. Uh, and they became much more concerned about that as they uh, heard the top, um, the top vote getter in the GOP talk about how he was going to you know, follow Trump's line and he's an anti-vaxxer and an anti-masker and uh, all of these kinds of things and uh, people were just not, were not gonna have it and they went out and voted and, and really to my surprise, it was almost two to one. So it was a very significant vote, very, very significant. And it makes us you all know, I, in California very happy. <laughs> well, not all of us. And around the country because it's, you know, uh, breathe a sigh of relief because they were thinking that if the Republicans won in California. They were going to be an election in Virginia coming up, and they might copy it in Virginia and lose a senator in California and lose Virginia, and then that affects the midterms and the whole progressive domestic policy. Most uh, definitely, it would have been super tragic. Definitely, oh. would have just been devastating. But e even though this was like a good outcome, I, I just think I'm still troubled at how it's almost like a habit now of challenging the small d Democratic election results. You know, it happened in November when Trump said, oh, it's a fraud, you know. And so, I mean, I know it's California, you know, California, you know, Democratic controlled blue state went for Bernie in the primaries last year. But I really think it's a reflection of the overall national sentiment. You know, and I think the unions played a good role in it. Um, I'm reading uh, what the uh, American Federation of Teachers uh, were, were posting on their social media. And it was saying, you know, it, California voters rejected the recall. And then they said, um, they're talking about Larry Elder, the, the Republican candidate. And they were talking, reiterating time and time again about how he would have put the students in danger. You know, and they were talking about the classrooms. And I think they played a really good role. And so, yes, it was a people's victory. But I think the unions played you know, the, the working people played such a good role, a leadership role, really getting people to turn out so that, you know, it was it was done on principle. And so it reflects, yeah. as Joe was saying, it wouldn't be repeated in Virginia or Georgia or, you know, Lord knows wherever else, Ohio. I think, I think you're right. I think that, you know, the unions did provide that leadership role and the people overall provided the, what do you call it, the soldiers on the ground, making phone calls, precinct walking, text messaging, everything that you can think of to, to get people to go out and vote. Because remember, this is just a very special election that usually doesn't garnish more than, I don't know, 30% of the voters. But uh -huh. uh, I don't know the exact numbers right now, but uh, I know that it's at least over 45%. The thing that was interesting to me, Rosanna, is that if I remember correctly, the polling I saw, on the mask question, 
said that something like 50% of Californians were favorable to uh, Newsom's mask policy, and half of the remaining voters said that it was too lenient. So that there, there, there was an overwhelming majority, 75% of the, the voters in the state um, felt that California was doing either enough or should be doing a bit more in terms of uh, masks and vaccines. And that's really comforting to me as well in terms of national sentiment because I live in a rural area here and it's I'm just surrounded by, I mean, every, the front page of the local paper every day is some glowing write-up of an anti-mask, anti-mandate right-wing rally. Um, so it's good to see that uh, Californians have some sense. We're gonna deal with that in just a minute, but I was just uh, surprised to find out, Rosanna, that, and that y'all got a strange recall law. I mean, first you vote for the recall, and then whatever, and if that passes, say by 49%, the candidate that gets, and the second vote is for who would replace the governor. And whatever percentage of the vote, wh whoever got the largest share of the replacement vote, I mean, of the vote that yeah. would win. So you could get like 5% of the vote. <laughs> and, yes. and, and it's crazy. That's how oh, we yeah. got the Terminator back in 2000 something. I forget where. Schwarzenegger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Most of them had Reagan. Right now. Huh? Had Reagan. It's like as if, you know, as long as they're a Hollywood actor, you know, it's yeah. okay if they're conservative. <laughs> well, Elder's a, a radio show host, so oh, yeah. Gosh, yeah. But I think, Reagan. you know, also also key was, was um, that people really listened to what Elder's plans were. And they all, they were all about Trump. They were all about, you know, continuing his policies and all of those kinds of things. And I think that also really kind of concerned people. So people are still, have, they haven't forgotten Trump, which is good. It's hard to forget a son of a gun like, like uh, Trump. I just hope y'all lead the way in electing the next governor will be an independent from both the Democrats and the Republic worker trade union yeah. leader, hopefully a woman. who well, I don't know if a candidate like that is emerging, but uh, I mean, you know, they could be like AOC. By the way, I saw her at the, uh, I didn't see her, I saw a picture of her at the Metropolitan Ball. Did y'all see that? Mm -mm. She had yeah. Rich written on the back of her gown. <laughs> she had what? The, the flag she's Taxi getting Rich. from the left about that is ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, you know, now sectarian fools, let them be. Yeah, Man, all, I mean, white, all white men commenting on a woman of color's dress. That's what it is. That's I, um, so bad. Yeah, well, there were two dresses. There was one that was worn at some charity ball, charity dinner that was, somebody said $35,000 a plate, somebody said $300,000, you know. And the other one was, the, maybe it was the same night. I don't know. I don't get invited to those things. I wonder <laughs> why. <laughs> I wonder. And anyway, she had a uh, tax the rich written on the back of her, her back of her gown. Mm. It was stunning, 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 stunning. Well, you know, and a lot of the critics, they couldn't get an electric dog catcher. <laughs> You know, later. So, how's the party building drive coming, uh, Rosanna? It's going good. It's going good. We're uh, we have a new club in Louisiana. So, anybody who lives out there in Louisiana, hit us up. I think the our first meme is: uh, Have you ever been called a communist? If so, it's time to join. Time That's to join time. the fight. Make it official, right? That's right. Make it Make official. It official. Rosanna will sign your car. You know. That's right. I will. <laughs> go down in history as, uh, as a member of the party with a uh, autograph from Rosanna Cambron. <laughs> well, uh, what else is going on in the country? Uh, I see that, uh, you know, by the way, the next month, extremely important, the voting rights bill, the uh, human infrastructure bill, $3 trillion, um, we got to do everything we can in order to get it passed. 
you know, because if it's not fast, trouble, trouble, trouble down the road, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we got a we got enough trouble, uh, more than enough trouble. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I, this mass thing, Scott, you were arguing about minority rights at the last uh, last session. I was saying, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, sorry. But uh, yeah, what I was saying is minorities that, have rights. Well, I mean, I mean so listen, we don't, mean don't live by, in a democratic centralist country. Um, I mean, but we live, we live in what is purportedly a democracy um, where the will of the majority of the people uh, sets the general trend in the country. And, you know, that's very often not the case in this country, as we, as we know, and as we've said over and over again, but on the mass question, the majority of the people in this country want um, to be safe. They have no problem with masks. They have no problem with, with getting vaccinated. Um, and there's, I think anyway, this, this right wing fringe um, who the only freedom they recognize is their freedom to put someone else at risk, harm someone else, impose their priorities on someone else. And they're, they're driving the entire national conversation on this, you know, lawsuits and, and rallies and threats and uh, intimidation of school boards. It's, it's crazy. It's, you know, it's the same thing that it's, it's part of the fascist threat to my mind. You know what I was reading this morning that the police are one of the leading categories in society that don't want to get vaccinated. The well, police. Surprise. I mean, with the you know uh, depth of, of cooperation between police forces and the extreme right. Uh, Fifty percent of the New York Police Department don't want to get and it's LA too, Rosanna, and in LA they're filing suit. You know, I don't know. I don't get it. I mean, I do get it. You know, but I just don't. I'm just like irrational craziness. I, I, I would but, think that because they they they've seen so many people. You know, they had they had to go to uh, the hospital or go to the the people's residence to find out what's going on. Those nine one one calls. I was surprised that uh, there were firemen who were endorsing Elder, who was an anti-vaxxer, anti-masker. And they're, the fire department are the first on the ground to, to go and see when, when the 911 call comes in. So they had to have seen so many people dying, so many people suffering with this virus. I, I don't understand it either. Yeah, I've had people tell me that um, they, they had a relative that died of COVID Therefore, they're qualified to, you know, explain to you why you shouldn't be wearing a mask. Like the fact that, mm -hmm. that someone they love died becomes justification for their refusal to, it, it's, it's completely crazy. Well, you know, uh, hopefully, by the way, I understand that uh, in some countries in Europe, they basically defeated the uh, virus, you know, um, and uh, 80, 90 percent of the populations are, are uh, vaccinated and, uh, you know, they're not, not doing bad. And if folks had gotten vaccinated here, there wouldn't be a need for mandates. Right. Wouldn't be a need. It would, it would, you know, but because of foolishness and conspiracy theories and all other, I mean, it's just, Okay, enough, uh, but booster shots. I wanted to raise the issue of booster shots. <laughs> I mean, that, some people are saying, why are you trying to get a booster shot when the majority of the people who live on the African continent, they ain't got vaccination at first. I mean, so should we, what should be the official position of the Communist Party on booster shots? Put a moratorium on it until the third world gets vaccinated, or should we uh, uh, do it uh, 
be pro boosters for every person, immigrant, non-immigrant, citizen, non-citizen. There's still no evidence um, that boosters Yes or no. What's that? <laughs> yes or no. <laughs> no, that, no, 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 no. Well, you're not going to trap me in that one. No, no, you're not going to set the terms. You want a booster or no, Scott? Uh, no, I will not. I will not get a booster because I don't need one. Uh, boosters are necessary for people who are, you know, um, immune compromised or immune suppressed in ways that prevent their body uh, from generating an adequate immune response to the first uh, series of vaccines. So people, uh, for example, on rejection meds, receiving chemotherapy, taking high dose steroids, uh, other immune suppressive conditions, absolutely. Uh, booster shots are needed. Um, there's not evidence that they're needed in most other cases. And as the, the head of the World Health Organization pointed out, um, uh, what did he say? It was really well put. Okay, your um, wife is a doctor. You got all of the, <laughs> you have an advantage. <laughs> Michael, yes or no, boosters. I guess I disagree a little bit because if we're going to be for the vaccine, I mean, which means we're, okay. we're for the first two doses and then a booster shot, we have to be for the booster shot. But I do agree with Scott that like maybe it's not necessary right now. So when I walk down the street and I see all these pharmacies that have like the vaccine and people aren't really lining up to get them, you know, because as you say, conspiracy theories, it's a shame. And so we should push for the United States and other countries where people are rejecting it, you know, saying that eh, and ship them to countries that do need them so that they can get them before we even consider So it. you're a yes or no? I don't get it. I'm for a booster shot when it becomes necessary for me and others, yes. Because I'm for the vaccine. I believe in science, yes. <laughs> I'm confused, but that's all right. I'm generally confused. <laughs> boosters or no? No, no boosters. I, I, no boosters. I feel like it's, first of all, it's an attempt to make more money for the pharmaceuticals. So I'm not a... I'm not, I don't, I'm not married to a doctor, but I just feel that first, the other thing is that there, we have, we're internationalists. We have to, we have to promote, uh, you know, international solidarity and we have to uh, promote the, this equality, the sense of equality to all countries. There's people who are dying in other countries. Why would we expose, why would we demand a, a booster here? Well, what about the rest of the world? We have to think about others first and foremost. But, on the uh, other hand, you know, you can you can have Scott, you can be vaccinated and still be exposed to COVID and carry the virus and not know it. You can be one of those, what do you call them? Uh, carrying people who carry. huh? right. And so, and then what if you travel someplace? So you know, you might expose and therefore. The ugly reality of it, Joe, is that I'm, I'm fully vaccinated and have been for um, four months or so now. And I, I've gone back to wearing a mask in public um, because uh, the rejection of the vaccine and the rejection of masks by so many other people around me makes it um, dangerous for me, dangerous for my family and, and dangerous for, for others. So at this point, I think, um, I kind of agree with Rosanna. I don't think the booster is something that we should be, you know, really pushing for. I think the two dose vaccine series and 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 masks um, are what are what we need. But what but about like what if it becomes necessary for not just here in the United States, but everywhere, Cuba and China and all the countries? Yeah, six no, it becomes necessary for sure. Yeah, but there's no evidence that it is. That's there. my art. Yeah, I agree with that, but. We, the vaccines, there's, there's a surplus of vaccines here mm -hmm. that can certainly be shipped off to places like India, Africa, where people really need them and they don't believe in conspiracy theories. You know, there's people who we're, need them. It, but there is that, evidence um, the vaccines that we have so are, That's why the, the, the Center for Disease Control and that other outfit, they're debating today. They're gonna have a debate, they're gonna, they issued the, and, and according to what I understand, there's the Pfizer study, and there's a, the Israeli study, and they're saying that the uh, immune response weakens after it declines after a period of time. And in order to boost your body's antibodies, 
to fight against it, you need the, the boost. Otherwise, because there's so many people in this country who are not vaccinated, you need to reinforce the front line against the disease. And the, on, on the question of shipping the boost, the shipping vaccine doses abroad, it's not quite that simple um, because the vaccines that we have, uh, Moderna and Pfizer in particular, um, demand very, very special conditions. You have to have access to really um, advanced refrigeration. They have to be kept extremely cold. They don't last for long when you open them. So they're really not designed for uh, low resource um, and um, you know uh, exploited countries. Um, uh, they're really, it's a, it's a first world vaccine, whereas the vaccine that Cuba developed, uh, the Silverana, um, is uh, shelf stable. You can keep it at room temperature for months, um, which kind of gives you a sense of, you know, the different priorities that Cuba approaches. Give them the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Give them the Nobel Prize in medical mm -hmm. medicine. I mean, you know, well, you know, it's, it's capitalism is crazy. Anarchic, driving people mad, and uh, you know this. If there's anything that proves the need for socialism, it's the response to the COVID crisis. I mean, really, think about it. You know, it's, it's just uh, oh my goodness. Uh, but we're we're a long way from that. You know, everybody's calling Biden a socialist. Not everybody. The right wing is calling them that. But his foreign policy is on several points is uh, uh, close to Trump. In some cases, it's worse. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it, 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 it's true. And um, uh, they tightened up the uh, restrictions on Cuba. They're going after Venezuela. They got Nicaragua in their sights. And uh, they just signed an agreement with Australia to bring into the waters of the Pacific nuclear powered submarines. And do you know who's really mad about that, Rosanna? France. <laughs> the French. Yes. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> the French are furious because they had a deal with the Australians. And, yeah. and they didn't even, the Biden administration didn't even tell them <laughs> that they got, you know what? They got Let them eat each other. Huh? Let them eat each other. <laughs> Let them eat each other? Yeah, yeah. but they're going to have us for dinner. You say, Let them eat each other. <laughs> they're going to have us for dinner. And, you know, these hot shot Yale, I'm not against Yale or Harvard or any of the Ivy League. Uh, if I could have gone, I would have, but they rejected me. They said, mm -hmm. no, not. <laughs> but, you know, and they think that they know everything and they don't know nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. So we need to develop a movement in this country for uh, peace and solidarity and against Cold War. And uh, we need it now. Yes. Michael, we can't wait. No, I agree. I, that, I, and I'm not defending Biden. I'm not, he's not my homeboy or anything, but <laughs> I think, I think well, that- One is enough. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think it's a mistake maybe to just say, oh, it's the Biden admin. I do think his foreign policy is very dangerous and we need to avoid a cold war. I agree with the peace movement, but I also think that it's reflected in some of the other uh, lawmakers. And I mean, Congress right now is controlled by the Democrats and we have, you know, just this past week, they did a tax re reconciliation bill that like bails out billionaires. And so like, what do we need to do both domestically and uh, in terms of our foreign policy with these lawmakers to make them see that this is dangerous? This is dangerous. You know, it has your 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 um, foreign policy is sometimes reflected by some of these moves you're making domestic. So how can we have them move on both fronts? Because I think most of them would agree that a cold war is bad or a hot war at that, because they often escalate in the hot wars, depending where you are in the world. But I think um, there are some lawmakers, maybe not Manchin, uh, maybe not Biden, but I think there are many who would um, not, I don't want to say move left, but maybe just see the reality 
uh, a, a, of their constituents and, and see their points of views. Uh, you know, Rosanna always talks about um, the people's movements. And I think that if they see how unpopular sanctions on Cuba in the middle of the pandemic and the, this cold war on China and uh, bailing out billionaires are in the middle of this economic crisis we're still in, I think they, some of them would change their positions. I, I hope so. There's an electoral kind of calculus there, I think, that they think that, um, or my sense anyway, is that they think that they can appeal to like the progressives with a lot of these economic measures, you know, the, um, uh, the child tax credit, the infrastructure stuff, uh, stuff on labor, and then um, reach out to moderate conservatives with the hawkish uh, rhetoric and win, you know, win away some of some support from the Republicans. It, Hillary Clinton tried to do it as well. In fact, um, just after she lost the election, or she she proposed that as a strategy, just after she lost the election in 2016, or was stripped of the election, or however you want to put it, um, she gave an interview to the Guardian where she said that basically. Um, center left parties need to crack down on immigration because that's how you're gonna win people away from the right wing base. So you have to imitate the right on some issues to win away a part of their base. I think so um, kind of as Michael was suggesting, what we have to do is show the unity that they, uh, the, the winning unity doesn't, that's not how it's built. The winning unity comes on stuff that actually benefits the people, not on, you know, um, war and, and militarization. I don't know. I read that the, the, the group of uh, amateur astronauts went up to the space shuttle or the circling that. I want to go join them. <laughs> yeah. Down here on Earth is a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but then I would abdicate my responsibilities in the party <laughs> and, and all of the things that I've agreed to do. But I, plus, I don't have enough money to buy a ticket, so. Forget about that. Priorities, well, they, priorities. <laughs> that does it. Stay strong. Stay safe. Stay in the fight. Talk to you next week, everybody. Bye. 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 Oh, my goodness. Where is the... Oh, there it is. Bye. <laughs>